Hi everyone. So we're doing um, clockwork dragon link today because it was requested by one of my viewers. And if you ever want a, um, a piece of work requested from a coloring book, just comment below or comment on any of my videos. Um, so just so you know, this is going to be a um, commentary tutorial. So as I'm coloring, I'm also going to be like um, recording the colors and the color codes for future reference so I can like put it in the description box below but as I'm doing it I'm also going to be telling you guys what color I am picking up okay so let's get started so today we are going to start with the face because I always start with a face and we will start with our lightest colors because I always start with my lightest colors and build up so let's pick up, so I'm working with the Prismacolor 120 set, um, if you don't, this is, this is just a set that I use, so today we're picking up PC1093 and this is um, a, a seashell pink. So it's like that a and just so you know, I'm using the Derwent Sharpener and I really love this, it's really great. Um, I use it for my favorite castle polychromas and my Prisma colors. So, um, if you guys know how to contour with makeup, it's a really similar um, similar uh, process. So we basically start with the shadows of the outer face, and we just build some light depth. Don't I don't want to press too hard because I am going to build up. Um, a couple of people have criticized the way I work, but you know, I'm self taught. Um, everything I'm doing, I'm learning along the way, and so will you guys. Everything will improve with practice. So, I am trying to um, build my layers thinner so I don't, I guess the word is burnish the paper, um, but this is how I work. So, I'm just going to put that light color on. So see, I'm just going to zoom out for you guys. Okay, so see how I've coloured. So I have shaded from the outer face in and I've kind of tried to build up cheekbones, if you can see there, see? Uh, just to give the, the drawing a bit of shape and depth uh, and give it that 3D effect. Um, I don't generally like to do a bridge, a nose bridge. I, some people do it. I just like to, I guess, give it sort of some 3D shape. You know, and these are like color, these are like illustrations, so you don't have to be that realistic. Like, don't worry about it, you know? Everything's your expression. If you think it has a, if you think this girl has a really sharp bridge, nose bridge, then put it in. If she has a flatter face and a cuter nose, you can put that in. You know, it's up to you how you render it. Um, no one should tell you how to color. Um, people can always tell you like tips and stuff, but you know, I guess there are some rules when it comes to art. But at the end of the day, um, you know, it's always fun to go outside the box. And I think that's what makes you stand out when you step outside the box with art. So that's one layer of the face. Let's just do some arms. Um, with the arms, I just we'll put the we'll put the the shadowing from here. So the highlight will be towards here. Sometimes I don't do this right, guys, um, because I'm not fussy like that. I'm not trying to create something realistic. Um, so sometimes I don't do things um, logical, I guess, when it comes to shadows and where I put the lights and the darks and whatnot. I just do it how I want to do it, and sometimes and it sometimes turns out really nice. And sometimes, if that's 
if that's not right then I don't really care because I'm enjoying what I'm doing and you guys should enjoy what you're doing too don't let someone put you down about how you color or how your technique is you know always listen with an open ear but don't get upset if someone uh, criticizes your technique or whatever okay so I'm gonna put that away so I never, when I'm working on pieces, for example, I'm working on the skin right now, I never put away the colours. I always set it in my little um, pencil easel, just in case I want to pick it up later again. And so I can, uh, I can record all the colours that I've used. Okay, so I want to pick up another skin tone. This is PC927 and this is a light peach and I just want to give it some pinkness to the skin and this color I'm just gonna like just run across. It's I'm not creating any depth I'm just running across just give it that um, I guess it's base like a base base pink you almost can't notice it at first, but you know, I just feel like this, the first color I chose was kind of, um, kind of, um, not as pink. It was very like, very dull, like a dull skin tone. Anyway, I hope you all have had a good week. I'm in talks, I'm in talks with, um, I'm in talks with a, a therapist about creating a coloring book, an illustrating one, because if you guys know, I, I, I am also an, I am, I also do art and I'm a graphic designer and this therapist wants to create coloring books that not only are therapeutic, but help people and I think it's a great idea you know a lot of a lot of books help us but they never really help us go on a um, a mental journey if you get what I'm saying like we don't we do this to relax but we don't do it to deal with our, our issues of whatever's causing us stress oh sorry guys I just picked up um, beige sienna one pc 108 and i'm just creating some shadow so here on the neck again um but yeah i've decided that if i'm going to do these real-time commentaries i'm not going to bother writing out the captions because guys the captions take forever like Sorry, not the not the captions. The subtitles take forever to write out, like what I like to record and retype everything that I've said in this commentary. Especially if I, it takes me like four hours, five hours to do one of these, you know. And when I'm some people when they color, they always plan their colors, but I never plan. I just go with the flow and I just let the rhythm. I just let the rhythm of the the artwork just take me with it and I think like yes I am a perfectionist but you know this this is this my channel is is about relaxing it's about letting letting go of letting go of all your daily stress and just just you know just doing whatever you want just going with it going with the flow of the motion um, you know my daily life is, my daily design is so, everything's so planned, pre-planned and thought out and everything. Sometimes it's really nice just to, sorry, picking up PC 193. Just gonna keep going down on the neck here. I missed that part. Sorry, what was I saying? Um, sometimes like, you know, as a graphic designer, um, everything's just so it's it's all it's all thought out conceptualized before we even design like that's the process of design which is very different to art sometimes with art you don't really just like plan it you just go with the motions 
and that's what I, that's the difference between design and art you know um, so maybe maybe design is a go with emotions type of thing but I always think the best type of design is ones that are thought out and um, planned out and structured as to art art is a very emotive thing um, your emotions really really dictate where art goes you know your moods really dictate where you take pieces of work and sometimes if I'm not in a mood I will honestly just stop pieces of artwork just midway because I just am in a funk with it like sometimes you need to step away and if you feel like you're coloring and it's just not you're not feeling it step away okay picking up 927 light peach and just again I, I want that I want that pink that nice pinky flesh color just to come out and I think I'm gonna do someone with a more olive complexion today how she look she's not pale she's not fair either we'll see we'll see that where this takes us You know, I really don't have any rules when you guys are following colouring. You don't have to copy the exact colours. You can always switch up the colours. Sometimes it's just nice to colour and talk and listen, you know. Because, you know, we, we all colour because we just want to relax. And sometimes it's really good. If you don't like listening to my voice and you want to colour, um, just mute my mute my audio and just put on some relaxing meditative music and just go with emotions I always put annotated images as well of what colors I've used sorry I just whacked my lamp <laughs> okay I feel like we need some, we need a warmth to the skin. Maybe this color will do. This is beige. And let's just see if this works. Just running this all over the skin tone. See if it gives it a bit of warmth to the skin. Prismacolor pencils work really well with this paper within this coloring book. Um, the Faber Castells are nice too, but I find these just blend really well on this paper for some reason. And I find that the Prismacolors work really well on Hannah Carlson books. Um, so really, guys, like you just need to you know experiment and test out your paper. There's a bit of warmth coming through. I feel I'm drawn to this color for some reason and this is the PC925 and I'm just going to put shadows near her eyes. I'll just see. I know some of us aren't game enough to touch colors like this but I just feel like it just would give something a bit interesting to the skin or to the face or the illustration.
I guess I'm sort of doing like eye makeup at the moment. Just to get something interesting. Wanting to give it a bit of warmth, I'm picking, I'm picking up a salmon pink, which is PC 100 well, 1001, and I'm going to run it near this pink I just put in, and just blend it in. Don't press too hard, just small strokes. Can you see that? Just using that colour near the red and just small strokes with it. The colours are blending together and they just blend really nicely. Very seamless. Just into my eyes. With that salmon pink, I'm just going to look, build it into those shadows that we did before around the nose and the and the bridge of the nose. Cheekbones, chin. See, so she's she's really coming together. I'm just hoping that with this commentary that I'm I'm doing as we go, that you'll be able to hear this very clearly. Um, yeah, or else I hope that you can just follow just by visual, and if if the audio does fail, I won't know till I'm finished completely and editing and uploading. Okay, and then in the salmon pink, I'm just running it through the arms and the neck, just to bring that warmth through the, all the skin. And then I'm going to pick up a purple, which I'm going to run around the neck. I know I'm picking up odd colours, it's just I feel like colours like this just make things a bit interesting, you know. I'm just going with my moods, hopefully it turns out alright. You know, I'm thinking since we're using a lot of these red warm tones in her skin that her outfit will probably be a similar colour or her accessories or her dragon will even be a similar colour.
you know guys you can always follow me on instagram or twitter i'm more active on instagram if you want to see what i'm doing on a regular basis usually when i'm working on work or something i would normally upload a work in progress um but yeah oh just check how i'm going you know sometimes i go a bit quiet and then when you guys talk to me or comment, it always reminds me, <laughs> reminds me to, um, you know, be more engaging. I love it when you guys talk to me, by the way. I love engaging with you guys, you know. It's one of the, one of the many things that I look forward to when I'm engaging with you guys because, you know, it's great when you talk to people that have similar interests, you know. Oh, see that? What colour is this? This was the PC995. And that was the color that I was using on the skin and the neck. And look, I'm using it with the with the eyes, and it's just making it pop so much more. It's looking really good, looking very interesting. I like it. I like how this is turning out. Yeah, it looks really good. It looks look, coming very coming out very well. Okay, and just knowing that, I'm going to go and pick up the the Crimson Lake, which is PC PC nine two five, and what similar to what we did around the eyes, we're going to do around the neck and the arm. Just um, build that purple into the crimson red, Crimson Lake, sorry, and just blending that through slightly don't push too hard normally you'd use like a dark brown or something to create shadow but you know sometimes these colors just make things a bit more interesting and then picking up again PC 1001 and just using that color to blend the the crimson leg and the What's it called? Mulberry, which is the, the darker purple. And just working that salmon pink into those colours here and just blending it through like and look at that. It looks so much nicer. So blended. Looks good. Looking good. I'm using colours like this. Using colours in this way um, kind of gets rid of that streakiness and I guess this is like a um, Prismacolor thing. Prismacolors smudge together really well, really easily. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but in this case I don't mind it um, when it comes to building layers like this, I don't mind it. Yeah, that looks good. Looks good. It's looking good. So normally every time I post a video, it's I've always filmed it like a week before and then upload it. This will be probably up next week sometime. But yeah. Just going back into the skin. Some areas I'm noticing are a bit streaky, a little bit too like too strong. And I'm just going back in with this salmon colour just to blend it so it's a bit more seamless. You know. Looking good. Alright. Let's just zoom out. Oh, looks good. Looks very cool. Alright. For now, I guess we'll just pause. And I'm going to record this. And then we'll move on. Alright, so I think we're going to move on to her hair okay 
so let's do that. I'm just going to select some colours and just see how that goes. So I'm picking up Crimson Lake PC925 and we're going to just work from dark to light and this is how I work. If you see my other colouring in, we normally start with a darker colour and wherever it curves, it's where the lighter colour sits. And the tip would be the darker colour too. Sorry, I just picked up PC924 to build on that colour. And then I'm going in with the Salmon Pink, which is PC001, blending it through. Just building that colour. Going in with uh, PC924 to the highlight point, and you don't generally have to fill the whole colour. You can leave some white space from the paper, that's fine. Just to give it that highlight, see how it pops. And I'm going to pick up another colour as well because I feel like um, it's not dark enough. So I'm going to pick up this Sienna Brown. And I'm just going to go where the darker sections would be and I'm just going to build on that darker colour just because I feel like um, there needs to be contrast. Don't ask me why she's got red hair. I just felt like she needed red hair. No. I colour as I as my mood goes. Going with the brow, since I have this sienna brown, just dark to light. Actually with this brows you can just pretty much fill them in. You don't really have to render them from dark to light. It's a skinny brow. No one's going to notice. Okay, doing all the hair again. Let's just do it with one colour at a time. Picking up sienna brown. Tips. Just, just doing the tips. No, I don't press too much. Just go lightly. Again. Okay, so 
this girl has short hair, I just realised. Um, so it's just shorter length, shorter length hair. Picking up PC nine two four. I can understand why you guys have asked me to do commentary while I'm doing this, just because when you're listening, you just it's better for you to listen what these colors are rather than like figure it out yourself. It takes you a lot longer, I guess. Filling um, up those colors. Remember, I'm going on top of the colour that I laid on top and then layering the new colour above it. But don't press too hard because we still want to see the colour below it coming through. Picking up that pink salmon. This is the exciting part because this is where you probably notice the most difference running through. Bringing that pink center through, blending those reds together. that light peach and running it through the middle. Remember you don't have to fill the whole thing, you can always leave some white if you like. That's up to you and your preference. I let some white bits come through. And I'm just going to pick up the darker colour, the crimson lake, and just run it through again on these darker bits. I just want to build up that red because I feel like there's not enough red showing through. go hard or go home when it comes to crazy tactics like this. How's that? Okay. I'm going to run a little bit of red through the brow. Not too hard, just a little. There we go, it looks good. Okay, and I'm um, picking up that light peach. 9927. Two, nine, two, I'm just blending those colours through here. Yeah. I just felt like they didn't blend as smoothly. Looks good. She crazy. Alright, let me just stop for a second, record the hair colour. I'm just going to quickly do the lips because it's a very small piece and these are the colours I've selected 
We'll start off with dark to light. So PC929. Then we're just going to go on the outer edges. And then in the center. And the top. Put it darker where the cupid's bow is. And lightly fade. Picking up next color, PC928. And small strokes from the darker color, bringing it up. And then from the cubist bow, bring it down in small circular motions just to blend those two colors together. And then with the lighter color, we're going to run it through again. See this little patch, which is like just paper? Just leave it blank, just as a highlight. Same with here, right near the cubist bow. Don't need to fill the whole thing pink. Makes it a bit 3D and cool. Alright, just let me quickly record these colours. I'm doing it as I go and I don't want to keep stopping the film. with her boots and I'm thinking brown so to do brown get some all right here we go I'm gonna get some of these colors which is sienna brown henna peach and light peach so we're going to do, so these, I'm going to do like brown leather boots and we're going to brown leather boots with some, I guess, we'll do some gold trim and then a black sole. So dark to light, so starting off with the, with the sienna brown which is 945 and just creating that shadow on the boot. decided that um, the gold trimming I'm going to use some paint I have this uh, new watercolor palette um, from fine tech and I use that to highlight that gold section which is sort of like it's there's like a you could use gold ink as well or you can just use like a gold gel pen if you want understand why um, one of my viewers asked me to do this piece I look at it and the detail on it is quite intimidating so I think it is always nice to have like a commentary thing to listen as you go because it's it can be quite intimidating coloring this piece um, it's also hard to like figure out what certain sections are I use the original paintings as references so I can figure out um, 
what certain bits are if I can't figure it out myself just by looking at it. Um, but that's a good tip as well. You don't have to copy the exact paintings, but you can always just use the use the painting as a reference guide to how to colour it in or what the illustration is because it is just line work and it's not necessarily um, you know that easy to figure out what certain bits are you know you could be colouring a background when it's just part of someone's jacket so always always use references um, sometimes people don't like to because it can put you off and you can kind of be influenced to colour it a certain way and I can understand that as well Okay, done with my sienna brown back in my pencil holder picking up henna which is pc1031 and we're going to add to the brown and bring it bring it out I always find my colouring videos, the time taken to do one of these videos is so much longer than painting. I just feel like, you know, but these are always the videos that you guys enjoy most, I realise. But it's also one of the ones that take me the longest to put together. And I guess not a lot of people do commentaries for things like this. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, just to give you an update of um, the prisoner colours right now that I'm using, I did a art supply video previously and I was talking about how some of the video some of the pencils were damaged and stuff and I did contact the customer service and they wouldn't help me basically and it's basically because they don't see it's their problem because they didn't um, they didn't ship it through but a lot of the issues that were wrong with it had nothing to do with shipping problems the issues that were wrong with it were manufacturing problems and that's like um, like complete chips like of the wood casing and that's that's not the person who I bought it off it's not their fault because um, they didn't chip it off, you know. It was a, it was a sealed in package, and it's honestly the manufacturing. Um, and that's what happens. Like with the whole coloring boom, I'm assuming a lot of these pencils are being demanded at a higher, at a higher demand. And sometimes when pencils like this are at a higher demand, it means that the quality assurance isn't isn't that great you know as what it was before they were coloring was popular um, but yeah honestly I'm not it's I am I am disappointed that they didn't help me or send me any replacements but um it just teaches me to be very careful with Prismacolor at least I have the whole 120 set and if I do want to replace certain colors I can go out and replace certain colors you know it's not going to cost me that much to replace colors if they get damaged but you know certain things like cracks from the wood casing is really disappointing and that 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 is a shipping thing but it's also a manufacturing it's also a manufacturing issue you don't see Faber-Castell polychromos um, getting having cracks through them they're just they just made it a lot better. You can trust Faber Castell for for that. Like if you, there's no there's no way. I have never seen or heard Faber Castells coming damaged, cracked, or split. You know, and Faber Castell is one of those companies that will rectify that. Like if they know that, they will send you, they will send you a new pencil. You know, 
All right, moving on with the next color, PC939 in the peach. And we're just gonna run it through the whole thing. Yeah, but other than that, I do enjoy these Prismacolors. It's just a shame that they're having issues with their um, quality assurance and manufacturing. I know a lot of people, and because of that, a lot of people are very scared of buying these pencils. Um, and one of my best tips would be to, if you're going to buy it, go in person, check out the pencils in person, and make sure that you're picking up a good quality set. Don't just buy it or purchase it online because, you know, you never know, you never know what could happen on the way to delivery. But I know if you buy it directly from Prismacolor, um, and there are damages, you can always send it back in a um, pre-packed, like a pre prepaid bag and they will send you a new pack. But then again, it's always messing around with whether the pencils get damaged during delivery. And that's what it is, they normally get damaged during delivery, like the cracks, because people aren't gentle with them. These pencils are so fragile, they fracture really easily. Um, please. Try not to drop these pencils. I haven't dropped any since and and I've heard a lot of stories where people have dropped them and the leads have fractured within and they just like they just pop out. Um, some people put it in the microwave which I don't think you should because there could be some metal shards in the lead um, which could make your microwave explode or you know do weird things so I wouldn't do that. You could use a heat mat, but um, honestly, if it was any other brand like Faber Castell, you wouldn't have this issue. And then picking up my light peach and running it through the lighter section, just fill it up. We're gonna go back with a darker color. I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking it needs more brown. These are brown leather boots. They need to be more bright on. They need a bit of contrast, I realise. You know, I, I use I use my colouring time as a time of meditation, time of self reflection. You know. times where I can mentally recharge myself for the week or for the next day, you know. It helps me reflect on whatever's going on in life and helps me relax a little, it helps me reflect on whatever problems that have occurred and how I can best deal with them, problems that may be occurring at work and how I can address them, etc. You know. Life's pretty good at the moment, but you know, you always have your, you know, your little odd, you know, problems or upsets that occur. Can we miss a spot? Alright, pick up a light peach. No, actually, I realise because this should be a lot darker. Just because of the shadow from this bit. been an interesting week for me, you know. I know this is just one of those, sorry, I'm in one of those moods where I just want to chit chat, you know, about me and life and, you know, connect with you guys on the level.
becoming more of a red leather than a brown. I don't mind that. Sometimes things just transform as you go. You just got to go with it. Go with the flow. You know. Sometimes you just, if you go with it, it may turn out beautiful and you may really like the outcome. Don't be too perfect. doesn't go, life isn't always perfect, it doesn't go the way you always want it to go, and sometimes you just got to go with emotions, you know, you, some things are out of your control, and that's alright, it's about dealing, it's about being able to um, cope with your anxiety or your stress, and you know, and just coping with it, you know, there are some things that you just can't control. Alright, so, keeping on with the henna, running it across, it's just, I think, um, I just wanted, I wanted a brown, but it ends up becoming like a red leather, which is still pretty cool. Um, yeah, it still looks really good. I think we're going to select another colour just to give it some contrast. I'm going to pick up a Tuscan Red, which is warm, a warm tone brown, but it's also very dark. I'm just going to give that contrast. Yeah, that looks good. Building that shadow, just building some contrast on this boot. Okay, so we're going to do the vest and I'm going to do the vest very similar to the boots, like a red leather with a gold trim and we're just going to do the shadow first in with your darker colour which is Tuscan Red 937 and just feel that shadow. what I'm doing here is I'm I guess I'm creating boobs uh, I just want to give it that 3d effect and just make it look give it more shape give it more curves Just lightly bring that color out. I hope you 
you guys been enjoying my videos and everything. Um, I really like if you give me some feedback because I really like to improve my channel and get more followers and subscribers. Um, I know that I do a lot of types of different types of art, for example, coloring and paintings and pastel art. And I just feel like sometimes you just need to mix it up, you know. It's always it's always nice to mix things up. Um, you know, going in with the crimson red PC nine two four and layering that color on top of the Tuscan red. Let me zoom in just to help. Okay. And then I'm picking up the raspberry, which is a 1030. And I'm going on top of that again, just blending all those colors together. Place. I'm always curious where my viewers are from, so comment below where you're from. Um, and yeah, I'd like to know. gonna go in with this peach and we're going to use circular motions to blend all these colors together
Just blending those colours together. Getting the darker colour again, which is the Tuscan Red. And then just working that back into all those shadow points that we were working on before. This goes around the neck. Good. All right. Pausing again so I can record the colours. We're going to do her um, headgear. So I'm going to start with the goggles. And we're just going to do some shading. So actually, we'll go, full, we'll go with a light colour first. And this is a sky light blue, which is 1086. And I'm just going to put that on the whole goggle and we'll just build this up. blue which is 1040 I'm building on that layer
picking up a cerulean blue which is pc 103 putting on that layer again blue which is the Copenhagen blue and this is PC906 and then it's going to create a darker shadow move on to a brown yep we'll go brown and we'll go okay purple brown okay so black cherry and we'll do it like how we do with the hair um, starting off with a dark on the outer curves and bringing it in.
I don't think I'm gonna edit this film and put music in the background just because I know I'm talking here and there. Um, yeah. You can always just put music on in the background as well if I'm a bit too quiet. It's just I'm concentrating. <laughs> Alright, so keeping on with the darker colour first. Now all this trim will go with like gold paint, um, if you don't have gold paint, a gel pen or gold ink will do, this paper can handle ink, just don't um, be stupid with it, you know, it's definitely not, it's definitely not like what, can't take watercolour paper I don't think, oh by the way I have some um, Faber-Castell watercolour pencils and I might do a tutorial using them. If you guys have watercolour paints, I mean watercolour pencils and have been thinking of using them, maybe I can try it out for you guys. See how it goes. Next we're choosing the dark purple which is 931 and we're just going to layer on top of what is existing. So it looks like our helmet's gone purple which is fine because it like matches with the red leather and the hair. It complements very well as well as contrast them against it. I'm going to pause right now, my battery on my camera is about to end, so I'm going to try and fix it up and we're going to get back to it. Alright, we're back and continuing where we were off, this is the dark purple 931 and going on top of that um, black cherry. <laughs> Sorry, my lamp just just fell a little, made me, made me jump a little. Sometimes my art room gets a bit too quiet and things like that just make me jump a little because <laughs> I'm in my zone, you know, in a meditative state. It's very cool how colouring just relaxes you, isn't it? So therapeutic. That must be why artists are so chill.
creating art for you guys and talking with you guys coaching you guys through this and stuff but it's not just about coaching sorry i'm getting carried away pc1029 and this is mahogany red and we're just going to do the lighter colors um and bring that across the whole thing remember building up that layer as i'm saying um it's it's not just about coaching with you like coaching you guys through this but it's also about interacting with each other um you know and engaging with each other because we you know you and i um obviously enjoy coloring or find watching this very therapeutic even if you you don't have even if your coloring doesn't turn out exactly like this you're going through some therapeutic meditative state doing it and that's what matters and that's what you should be um, embracing not perfecting anything just enjoy it go with the flow and just just feel just feel the art and meditate with it and relax you know you should never get stressed out about making something so perfect nothing's perfect you know nothing's ever perfect in life building on those layers. I think we need to add another colour to this combination. A lighter colour. Haven't figured out which one, but I'm thinking like a light brown tone, just to run across the whole thing. And just so that it integrates with the leather boots and the leather vest, I think we need something on the brown tone rather than the purple tone. Um, we got a lot of purple tones here, so we need to kind of create something, add something that complements what is existing. Um, it well, the color we chose, like the color I've chosen already, um, makes it contrast against the clothing. But at the same time, it's about complementing what's already there, like the clothes already there. But it, and it's about creating contrast because I feel like the the headgear is one of the most um, eye-catching points, as well as the dragon, and that, yeah, I think it's a, it's to me, my my eye jumps here to the face and the dragon, and I feel like that's one of those areas where we need to focus on the most to highlight and draw attention to. Um, yeah, okay, and then. So this is rose beige and I chose this colour because it has like a pink tone or pinky purple tone. Uh, it's neutral but it's not and I know it's going to blend really well. And um, this rosy beige will work really well with the skin. Like it complements really well with the skin. We still might add another red. I'm not quite sure. Once I add this color, we'll see if it needs it. If it looks too purple, it might need it. But maybe the purple is what we need to add contrast. And maybe we won't need like a brown tone. Good. 
need no we're gonna definitely need another colour. We're gonna need like a brown. Not a brown okay. What's this? Not a not a red brown. No. This is the brown I want. We're gonna add a burnt ochre. This is this brown I've chosen because I just want to put a colour on top of the whole thing that kind of brings the red back into it. Brings brings the redness rather than the purple. It's a bit too cold. Like the tone is a bit too cold for my liking. And I'm just adding this brown this burnt ochre just to give it that that warmth that I feel like it needs see it just pops a bit better and it complements what is the hair and everything we're not going to take away from the purple we're just going to add to it yeah that looks a lot better I feel like this picture might take me a while. <laughs> um, I don't know how long it will take me to upload as well. Um, so I've been considering doing two types of videos and one is the real time commentary and the other is the fast time lapse because there are some people who don't need the real time and can just follow on by just watching the time lapse um, and some of you just enjoy watching real time because it's relaxing to colour along as you go you know and sometimes you can learn some techniques while in the speed of, um, while as the sped up um, time lapse you can't really learn techniques um, because the video is too quick so I'm gonna post two types of videos and generally what I do first is I post a time lapse, and if you guys want the um, if you guys want the real time, you need to request it because I only supply on demand. Because um, you know, it takes time. It takes time to um, edit the videos. that purple undertone is very it's very engaging I think it's a very engaging color like the hint of purple is very cool um, subtle but cool yeah I like that I like it a lot sorry guys I'm just it's late at night well it's not late it's like 8 p.m. but you know I've had a long day off for work so I'm still mentally well, not really. I'm, I'm working. I'm not really working while I'm doing this because it's a relaxation to me. But you will notice I'm a lot more chill at night as to if you catch me during the daytime when I'm working because I'm very, like, you know, in my zone work mode normally during the day. And at night, I'm more like carefree, down to earth, diva, you know. Okay, I think the helmet's good. Um, I'm going to add some gold, and well, this is not gold, but I'm gonna add some like a gold color. So let's go with this. I'm just. I'm doing this as I go guys, I've never done this before. Um, Jasmine 102, 1012 and it's only just this 
this rim that I want to color. Everything else will be in paint because um, I just don't want it to be just paint. See here, um, with Prismacolors, it, it's very, it's it's a lot more oil, oil based than um, Baby Castles. And so when you're working with it, it's really easy to smudge or pull another color into your existing coloring. So example, it's very easy for me to pull that blue into this yellow, just because the way the pencils are made. Um, it's a formula. It's very um, malleable in a way. Okay, and then we'll go on top with the actual metallic gold. All right. So pause. I want to record the colors, and we'll move on to the next step. So tonight, I'm going to make sure that I can finish the girl, the girl's clothing and everything, and I'll do the the eyes later. But we're going to do the shirt, and I'm thinking we're going to do the shirt uh, pink, pink purple. So I'm going to lay down my flat color. And on the shoulders too. And then we're going to run it also along the skirt. This section is also part of the skirt, so that goes pink as well. And so here along the arms. So that pink's been laid down, now I'm going to go with this, and that pink colour was PC993. And then I'm going to go in with a process red, which is PC994, and build that shadow. I'm making it darker here near the wing because that's where the shadow would be. This whole area would definitely be dark so there isn't much light because it is beneath the wing, it's under a hand so it's not really a bright area. And then I'm going to go around the sleeves as well. Now this is definitely like a bright pink we're using. Um, might use this dark purple just to like uh, give it a bit of contrast and then we'll go in again with a light color on top to just help it blend through but you can you will notice a lot of these um, colors they look very unblended at the moment but that's because I haven't used that um, middle color or I guess the there's, a, there's always a colour that I use that kind of like blends everything together and it's generally one of those lighter colours just because I know um, these pencils and what they're like and how like I can just reiterate to you guys that Prismacolors are so 
so oil oil based yeah um they're really oily that you know it's really easy for for anyone to blend blend with another color Always try to do your best when it comes to blending. It makes your life easier if you do it right the first time. And then again with this uh, mulberry, which is PC995, and we're just going to try and create some contrast. And the way that I've colored this t-shirt is I've made it look very puffy, just by the way that um, I'm creating the shadows here, like I'm making it a bit puffy sleeve Skirt. I'm just using a lot more purple here with the skirt because I know that this area is going to be particularly dark because it's beneath the wing and it's beneath the hand. So there is more shadow in this point and same as here as well. There are a lot of light won't touch these areas so I've done it a little darker. Um, going in with another colour, I'm picking another colour, uh, and this is a pink rose, which is PC one eight, uh, PC one zero eight. Wait, sorry, PC one zero one eight. Sorry, it's getting late. Um, and what we're going to do is just run across the whole, the whole sleeve, just to blend everything together. Could use more layers it just means it takes more time and you know I'm always about creating nice pieces but I'm, I'm not gonna make money from these pieces so I don't really ever spend too much time second color in pink. I think we'll go pink, pink and red. Oops. Just messed that up. It's alright. We'll make it work. Shadow from the bottom.
going in again with the pink rose. So blend those two colours together. My goal is to finish the girl itself, um, a majority of her, and then I might move on to the dragon tomorrow. Or her accessories like her wing and her ring and her, her little key here. Alright, so we're gonna do red. So let's lay down some red. Yeah, that's fine. Laying down red. Crimson Lake and putting that on top again. Crimson Lake is a brighter red, just so you know. And then we're going to go in with the contrasting color to give it shadow and depth. the whole leg in here. I guess what I'm doing is I'm creating the same shadow with the same colour. Missed it. You can just fill it up with 
whatever colour that we use there or any similar red colour you won't even notice. There we go. And while I'm here with this pink, let's just try and do some blush. And I'm not going to make this crazy. I'm just going to lightly do circular motions where there would be blush. Just give it a nice little dusty pink. Yeah, see? Don't go too hard. Alright, I think we're done for tonight. And we'll move on to the next section soon. Hi everyone, we're back again and today I have decided that we're going to finish the girl and what we're going to do is we're going to do the, the trimmings and after some thinking I'm not going to do it in gold paint, I'm just going to do it in Prismacolors because I'm assuming you guys are going to use colored pencils and you may not have access to this gold paint so we're just going to do it in our most what what you guys would normally have um because sometimes gold ink and gold paint isn't something that you have readily available so we're going to pick up a color and i might work with three colors today start off with the lightest color um, we'll go with the light colors on the outs outer rim let me zoom in light colors on the outer rim yeah Sides, and then we'll go back with our darker colors again here with the rim of the goggles. Now back to the key, just a quick, a quick, a quick. Um, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna describe it as like a like a quick uh, render across, all in the lightest color, and then we'll build that shadow afterwards.
Now with the middle colour, this is PC916 and we're going to just add that colour to that lighter yellow that we had. And with this key, so I want to build the shadow, I want to make it dark on the outside rather than on the, on the inside, if you understand what I'm saying. Like I want here with the helmet, I want the darkness to be where it curves, while here I want the darkness to be on the outer rim. Don't ask me why, but that's what I'm feeling. going with the dark colour and this is PC917 and just adding that darker colour on the outer edges for the key. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. So it's it's not um it's not that contrasting but it does make a difference. Just gives it a bit of pop. So I'm trying something new today, or this with this piece, and I'm doing commentary as I'm colouring in, and this is just real time, like real time, real time coaching, I guess I could say, or real time guidance as I'm doing it, and just explaining what I'm doing. Um, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please comment below for some feedback. I'm not sure if uh, you guys would enjoy this, or would you just rather a quiet time lapse? of real time with music in the background. I know some of you guys are very good at just watching and learning and others need some um, talking or coaching. As you can, as some would say. Um, but yeah, if you have any feedback, that would be great. I never script these things. Uh, I just go, I just explain as I go. Uh, I don't. I, I've never really taught anyone how to do art, but this is just the way I would do it, and I don't, uh, I don't know the formal terms or the, um, the, you know, the proper, the proper terms to describe it, such as burnishing and all those words. These words like burnishing, um, I'm just learning as I'm doing. Like people, a lot of you guys are commenting and explaining what things are that I'm doing. And honestly, like, I'm just learning. I'm, I'm just learning. If you look at my videos from the beginning of the year, you can see a lot of growth um, from my first Jasmine Becker Griffith um, colouring in piece and just the change that has occurred within my art lately. You know, this is my art journey, and yeah, I'm not formally trained, but this is my journey, and this is how I do art. I'd love to go learn, but you know, it's not gonna put money on the, it's not gonna put food on the table, so <laughs> I'll do what I can. And it makes me happy, so that's all that matters, really, end of the day. It makes it really pop. Now, if you want, you could put gold paint on it just to give it that highlight or shimmer. Um, and you can thin out the gold paint as well so it won't be that um, noticeable. Okay, 
Okay. Just let me record these colours. And I'm going to quickly do this gem in the key. And I'm going to start with my lightest colour, which is PC118. And I'm just going to do a quick render, followed by the medium colour, which is PC122. And I'm just going to give it some 3D shape. Followed by the darker colour, which is PC923. Now that I'm looking at this, I feel like I need an even darker colour just to give it a bit of contrast and um, contrast between the red. So I'm going in with um, PC925. I'm just adding some depth. Try not to um, press too hard because it does make it difficult when you're adding more layers. So I did accidentally press too hard on the outer rim with the other colours, but it's still working. All right. And now I'm going to go in with my blender pencil. And this blender colour is colours and it's PC1077. And I'm just going to do circular strokes on the round, on the lighter section, and just blend it out. There we go. Now with that darker red, I'm going to go in where all the keys were, just lightly, and then I'm going to get another colour as well. is going to be a brown which is PC947 and we're just going to add some shadow and I'm going to lightly do the pupil area and then I'm going to get a green and I'm going to get a uh, 989 run that through here Trying to do like a hazel brown blue.
then we're gonna go in you know I'm not liking this I'm gonna switch it up no we're not we're gonna redo it so how how we all make mistakes right so how would I fix this and I'm going to show you now and I'm basically gonna make it darker so I'm getting PC208 and I'm just going over the top in the black and then blend it out now to me that's not black enough so I'm gonna go in with my um, my pigment ink which is by uni pen and I'm just gonna go in with the pupil such like this do that and color in the pupil. Top of these lashes. Alright, moving on. So we're going to do the wings and I have decided to only use two colors, and that is um, PC1052 and PC1051, and they're just some warm grays. So with a darker color, and it's gonna be like a more like a more more white wings with the gray shadow rather than gray wings. So the shadow is, the light is coming from the left, so the shadow is on the left of these wings. Oh, I know my camera can't catch the colour difference, but hopefully you can see where I'm putting these darker shadows. Um, don't press too hard, just lightly blend across, um, because we're going to go in with the lighter colour and blend it through again. Now we're not going to fill the whole whole wings with um, pencil I would just let it fade out you can leave paper blank don't worry I'm 
Now with the lighter color, which is uh, 1051, we're just going to go into the dark color and blend it out. Just so that we soften that, we soften that shadow. here with your dark color So in again with your darker color and the shadow here would be a lot darker because that hand and the shadow here would be darker too because of the hand. the wings to kind of look more angelic so I don't really want them to be dark and dirty looking like a dirty grey. I want them to be quite clean and using the grey like a shadow. So there we go. Very subtle but that's it. Okay um I'm going to do the wings again and we're going to do the trim which is Using the similar same colors that we used before uh, for the, the key and everything. So 916, 9, 916, um, 915, and 917. Okay? Same colors. And what we're going to do is the lighter color. Hopefully, you guys can see. Let me see. There we go. So the lighter colour here, alright, just lightly across everything. Which is 916. I'll just create that shadow where it curves. The shadows on the left, similar how we did the grey wings, and the shadow here because there's a groove. Darker color, which is nine seventeen. Put in those shadows. There we go. 
Okay, so continue what we're doing, blending the darker colour out with this colour 989. I hope I don't sound disjointed, like sometimes I, I film and then I run off and do something quickly and I come back. with um, the way my channel is growing. I know I've only been active for the past four months and it's growing really really well like really organically and I'm really happy about that and I, I love it that you guys are enjoying my art and my coloring and everything. It's really great to see. So um, I think I said this before but this this page was requested by a viewer and if you want to see a certain page from this book just request it and um, I'll see if I can fit in another I can do the your request as my next video because I I'm not really fussy with what pages I color um, I just generally just do whatever I'm, I'm in the mood for but if you guys are up like want to see a certain piece just comment and ask for it and I'll see what we can do I can always put it on my to-do list anyway After a sharpener, I really recommend this Derwent one. I use it for the Faber Castells and the Prismacolors, and it just works like a charm. run this across the whole thing because I'm finding it's a bit too um like it's too yellow green and I want to use this medium color just to like blend everything together so I'm basically running it through the whole background blend all the colors together.
so I'm pretty, I'm really happy with the green and the grass, so. So I've decided we're going to do the butterflies and I'm going to do them um, red, orange, yellow colours. So we'll start off with uh, 916. Just the inside. And then with um, 1003, we're going to do a, like a red gradient, red to yellow gradient. Okay, um, don't press too hard or else we won't be able to build our colours up. So just lightly, gradually build up that gradient colour. Then with 918, feel that orange.
bringing in another color and that is 1011 and I'm just going to use that to blend everything together and this is a lighter color and just laying that over everything should help everything kind of melt and blend together make it smooth I just don't want to see that uh, pencil grain running through everything Prism colors really like smudge and blend really easily. If you're thinking, if you're talking about which is more smudgy blendable, um, definitely Prismacolor. Faber Castell, um, not so much, but Faber Castell is still really good as well. They're both good in their different ways. Um, if you don't like pencils that blend and smudge too much, um, that is also something to consider. It's really, it's really annoying as well if you're colouring and you're colouring like yellow next to a blue because you might um, pull that blue across into your yellow which is not ideal if that's not what you're doing, if that's not what you're aiming for, you know. Alright, so um, those butterflies are done and then what we're going to do is with this pigment marker, we're going to color this in black and the reason I'm doing that is because I am concerned with a black pencil I won't be able to get everything sharp and crisp and I won't be able to get black enough so I'm doing it with this pigment marker And just using that black really helps that that red yellow gradient just pop. Now you don't have a pigment marker, you can always use pencil if you like. Um, just make sure it's really sharp. is not bleeding through so you don't have to worry about that but I would test it because all markers are different
looks good. I love that black. It makes it really pop. I'm sorry if you hear that background noise. Someone's using the blender, making a smoothie or something. Unfortunately, the walls are thin, <laughs> which is not that great when I'm filming. But I can say the acoustics of this room are amazing. Um, it just, just the. Just when you speak or sing in this room, it just sounds so clear and it's just so amplified. I just don't, the only reason I'm doing my recordings this way because it's just so annoying to do four hours of voiceover you know it's to watch and explain what you're doing four hours of voiceover is so annoying and not only that but the the memory um the, the memory when you're filming on top of that video would be enormous the video would be humongous whereas i feel if you record it um the memory won't be as big because it's with the video as with um, like voiceovers uh, it's audio on top so that's more memory more and that's a bigger uh, video file as well so I'm considering it that way um, I don't want to I don't want a video to take like two or three days to upload you know especially because my videos are normally four or five hours, especially with these colorings. Um, they always take so much longer to do. And that's why like sometimes, um, like this, this week I have no idea if I'll be on time with uh, my video scheduling, just because it's just taking me so long just to color in one, one page. I don't know if I'll have time to edit and get it out by the deadline, but um, I always try to keep up to I always try to keep up to my um, video scheduling, and I always try to at least give you guys two videos a week, and um, sometimes I just can't because either work commitments I'm too busy or, um, you know, it's I'm just taking too long to do a piece of work or a piece of artwork. Guys, if you ever um, enjoy watching my videos, please, please share them. Share them with your friends. Um, especially if you have friends like colouring as well, share them. Uh, I'd love uh, to engage with more people and have more followers. And the only way I can do that is if you guys help me and share my work and, you know, engage with me and tell me what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see, etc. I get as much of um, enjoyment in making these videos as you do watching them, you know. And sometimes you guys will talk to me about products and art stuff and, you know, we'll discuss things, which is cool. And I know I'm not classically trained in fine arts, but thank you for um, accepting me and liking my work. 
you know, it um, makes me feel special. It also makes my day when you guys like, subscribe and comment and whatnot. It's, it's something to look forward to. When I wake up in the morning, I have like a bunch of like emails of comments and questions you guys leave me. And I love that. I love, um, I love engaging with you guys. You know? Follow me on Instagram as well if you want to see like a like a real time view of what I'm creating at the at during the week. Um, sometimes I'll post things. All right, those butterflies look sick. Yeah, they really pop. So I still don't know what colour I'm going to do the dragon. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave that to last. Um, just see how the other colours complement it. So we're just going to do the background and then we're going to do the dragon. So let's do with the let's start with the um, the water. And I'm using like more ocean tones today rather than like blue tones. I mean sky blue tones. So I'm going to go with the lighter colour which is uh, 919 and I'm just going to do like a quick cover. So have you guys heard, Jasmine Baker Griffith has another book and she just released a Halloween book. Um, I haven't unfortunately purchased it, I would like to but um, I'm, I'm trying to save money <laughs> and I have so many colouring books and I feel like I should finish one book before I start another book and I don't want to get um, more of her books and not have time to finish it because you know, every piece of work deserves its justice and its time and its love and care. And um, I really want to finish these whole books because what I'm hoping is to finish a whole book and do like a, a flip through. I think that'll be so exciting just to um, show all that. Okay, moving on. So from there, we're going to go 9.05. And... Um, we're just going to do like a, how would I say, it's like we're going to do like a, a gradient up, so darker up because this, the sky is here and it will be light up here, so bringing, bringing 905 here and working that all the way up. Next colour would be uh, 105. And we'll add a fourth colour in just to help us blend all the colours together.
it done there. I'm going to use a color to just blend everything together and I'm bringing in 992 and this is like a, um, a teal blue and I'm just going to use that to blend everything together. Looks like an icy blue. And now these colors are inspiring me. So I think I know what we're going to do. I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm just feeling a vibe with this blue. Just going to go into that background and just blend everything through. Just because I'm noticing some of the paper grain um, isn't fully filled up.
So we're going to do the sky first and then we're going to work around that. So I'm going to try and put like a sunset. So we're going to do a circle. Oh, this is the wrong colour. We're going to try and do like a, um, a yellow, a white. We're going to do like a, um, a bright white blinding sun and um, have like a yellow glow around it. So what I would do is try and do like a, a gradient, gradient fade, but make sure that the fade, you have to be really careful as well. If you're using pigment markers on that um, butterfly, your Prisma color pencils may pick it up and pull it out. Um, yeah, so try and do that that sunset. So see how I'm doing that circular ombre. So you want to do that and pull the color out a little. Don't press too hard. Get another warmer color and I would so the color I just used was uh, 914 and now I have 1011 and I'm just going to blend that out and then I'm gonna grab this Cloud blue. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. And I'm going to blend that cloud blue into the yellow. get that cloud blue again which is 1023 and I'm just going to run it all the way to and fill the whole background all the way up to the clouds and then I'm going to get the darker blue which is Caribbean Sea double one zero three and I'm going to blend that darker color into the cloud into the um, the lighter blue which is cloud blue I'm just going to blend that through don't press too hard yet um, we may be including another blue color depending on how this turns out so just blend that through
Okay, so that looks really good. So I'm gonna get this colorless blender and I'm gonna blend the colors. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I noticed that the blue and yellow don't really blend in well. And that's because they're the colors, um, just because they're just, um, it's just the way they are. See, that colors blender just makes it so much more smooth. You have to also be careful as well because you don't want to pick up any of that black pigment from the butterflies. So try not to um, run it across or anywhere near those pigments or else you'll pick them up and pull them. that sky looks really good. Um, I think seeing that will do the clouds and what I will do is record these colors first and then we'll move on to the clouds. So with the clouds, I'm going to still use those two colors I used before from the sky and I'm adding two additional colors. So let's start off with um, PC1023 and we're going to color the whole thing just lightly. So we're just doing the first, the first tier of the clouds. In the light blue and then we're going to get the um, Caribbean blue which is 1103 and we're going to sort of outline and fade the cloud you know what I'm saying and um, do it fade it here to done the first cloud and now we're going to move on to the second cloud so grabbing so putting you don't need the cloud blue anymore you just need the Caribbean blue and a new color called blue lake which is 1102 and what we're going to do is 
lightly color the second tier. I don't know if this is the right word to use, but you know, I'm calling it a tier because they're layered, the clouds are layered, if that's the best way to explain it. So we're going with the second level of clouds, coloring that first layer in that um, Caribbean Sea color. And then we're picking up the blue lake. We're doing the same thing that we did um, in the first cloud. So. Sharpen that pencil. Now getting another color, which is the blue lake, which is one one zero two, and you know, doing the same thing with the last, um, the last level of cloud and running that color right through, just quickly. And again, with the, this new color, which is called Periwinkle, which is 1025, and doing that gradient again. And then getting that blue lake again and just using that to blend all the colors together in that third layer.
even getting my colors blender and going on top again just to blend out those grains that this is developing you know color the art the coloring piece always evolves over time and I kind of get a feel for it as I'm going along so I've decided to do like a iceberg type of thing and um, we're just gonna use a bunch of grays so with these um, icebergs they'll be a lot lighter than these this one will be a lot darker so if the light is coming from here, the shadow is coming, the shadow is here, okay? And this cliff side would be a lot darker. Sorry, this is color um, 1051 and this is a 20% warm gray. And basically we're just going to do the shadow, fade it out. So the 20% grey, now I'm going on top with the 10% grey, which is uh, 1050. And we're just going to blend that on top and blend it out. Remember, it's supposed to be an iceberg, so it's going to be basically white. And we're only colouring the shadow sections. Then we're going to get the blender pencil, which is 10777. Uh, Make sure you um, scribble it just on some paper because blender pencils can pick up pigment from previous um, blending. So just going on top of the grays and just blending it out, we're just going to try and pull those grey pigments out onto the white paper so that they blend a lot easier and cleaner. start off with the darker um, the darker cliff so I'm gonna get um, 1054 and I'm just gonna do a quick run over with this gray color make sure you get it behind the helmet as well and we're gonna do the darkest um, cliff side get this 7% warm grey which is 1056 and we're just going to render it um, so the shadow would still be here on the corner going up because the sun is here but generally this will be quite dark 
just because it's the first layer of the cliff and this would be the brightest. Getting a blender pencil, I'm just blending those two colours together so it's more seamless and less grainy. very similar to how we've done the clouds and using one of the previous colors in the first layer. So um, the layer that we're going to continue through is the warm grey which is 1054 and then I'm going to take a new color which is 30% grey and that is 1052. I'm going to quickly uh, do a Quick color through the whole thing, and then I want to get the um, the warm gray, the one zero five four, and I want to do the same thing as what I did before with the first level, and that is just do the darker rendering. Now the darker rendering would be at the bottom and side. colorless blender make sure you scribble it so you get rid of existing pigment and you go with the dark do circular motions just to blend it out and then you pull it up I know I don't use that many layers but um, this is just the way I work and the picture still turns out really nice as well you can always add more layers and if you're going to add more layers I don't recommend using a colorless blender to the very end. Same if you're using Gamsol. Don't use a Gamsol or any of those um, odorless mineral spirits till the very end after you've done all your layers. Actually, I want to get this um, warm grey, which is the 1054, and go back into the first layer a little. And I know because I've used the colourless blender, it's going to be a lot harder for me to um, blend in. But I'm just going to do a little bit more. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, the next level, so dropping, we don't need 1054 anymore. Um, using the... The... 20% warm grey, 1051, just quick, just going through again, same, same idea, um, just colour the full background lightly across, and remember your lighter sections are going to be here, okay, so don't get too carried away. getting your 30% grey which is 1052 
and doing that shadow again. Similar to what we did before. Just make sure that you make those shadows very defined. Then getting the colors blender again and scribbling it. Going into your darker areas first, circular motions, blending those colors together, and then blending it up into those lighter colors. purple dragon and um, as for like purple would pop just with the background and everything so that's what we're going to do so first off we're going to look we're going to do these and these I'm gonna call like gems or whatever I see these as gems and I see these as a great opportunity to make it pop a little So anything circular, even these bits, we're going to do um, blue stones where we can. So that was powder blue 1087 and I'm going in with a turquoise blue, a muted turquoise, which is 1088. And we're just gonna create some shadow. color and I'm going to get white and I'm going to put the white in the highlight section and just blend it out. You could do this with colors blender but I find white really helps you uh, highlight it. done those gems I am going to do the because it's like a mechanical dragon so we're going to get some yellow in there and I'm picking up 915 and 917 we'd use it again already and I'm going to sharpen my pencil gears and these gears um, will, will be like gold just be careful because you're using a yellow near a blue and you can kind of you could pull the yellow through pull the blue through into the yellow and you know just be careful 
Okay, so we're going to layer a, a layer of this yellow, which is um, 915, and we're going to color the gears in that first coat. So like these spikes will also be a similar colour. So just fade it out. So we'll go like a yellow and then fade it out, okay? Like this. And then I'll show you later how to integrate that with the purple dragon skin. your darker color which is 915 just giving it that um, that gradient effect So now we're going to move to the purple part and we're going to start with this light purple and we're going to just go all over. Don't forget to colour in the bits between the gears.
Okay, so now that you've done that, that was my 956 in the lilac. And now I'm going to get the Delilah Purple, which is 1009. And I'm going to create that shadow. So because the sun is coming from the center here, the shadow um, this time will, will be here. So it's going to be on the left, the right side, same as how we've done the cliff.
get this um, this other color which is lavender 934 and I'm going to use it to blend all the colors together and this will make the color purple pop do blue eyes just to match what's there so I'm 
so that was the turquoise, the muted turquoise, which is 1088 on the eye, and then on the outside of the eye is 208, and we're just going to blend those two colors together. And then I'm going to get the colorless blender and just make those two colors appear seamless. There we go. And then I'm going to get a black pigment marker and fill in that black. And what I've done is I've left two white dots just as the shine in the eye. Okay, so there's your dragon. And then I'm going to get this black pigment marker and colour in the bottom of these boots. touches and we should be almost done. So I'm going to record these colors and then I'm going to do some final touches. So sorry I didn't press record so what I did was I got a Posca pen and I did strokes here so it looked like running water and whenever there was um, like an eye or dragon eye I did the highlight points with the Posca pen and with the diamonds or stones, I put like a highlight mark and I'm going to do a highlight mark here too. And now with this artichoke colour, I'm going to create some shadow in this key. go. It's finished. 